guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Twee. Subscribe while you're at it, it's free girl. So in today's video, we are gonna be doing another full face makeup tutorial. So I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video, we are gonna be testing out Anastasia Beverly Hills. When I was first starting into my blogger makeup journey, I loved Anastasia Beverly Hills. They had some amazing products, but then as time went on, I felt like they was kind of lost behind the radar a little bit. I wasn't excited about their launches that much anymore, but today we have a new foundation, girl. This is so freaking exciting to me. When I saw that she was launching a liquid foundation, I was like, Hmm, it could go really, really good or really, really bad because her last foundation launch, when she launched her stick foundations, I did not like them, guys. They were just so dry. They didn't give me enough coverage. They just kept sliding around throughout the day. So I literally got this corridor to my house yesterday, which I'm so excited about. And she also launched a new translucent powder to go along with the foundation. So we are going to be putting Anastasia Beverly Hills to the test today. I've done this makeup look as well. Super nice and vampy. <sighs> So if you guys want to see how crazy this look, please keep watching. Roll the intro. Ow, I just hit my knees. <laughs> So let's get started fresh face as always um, just to warn you guys i did have an allergic reaction to a product earlier on this week so i'm nearly finishing the reaction so if you see my face is a little bit bumpy that is why very annoying so anastasia beverly hills just launched her liquid foundations which is super exciting it's called the luminous foundation and i have five shades here to test out i do have to say when i was looking for the colors i found it a bit hard to navigate the only warm undertone that i could find within my kind of nc30 nc35 shade range was two shades so the only shades that i have in the warmer kind of undertones is 330w and 335w there was quite a lot of neutral shades and there's also a lot of pinky shades but in the warm not as many i think it's actually really refreshing that a brand is bringing out a product that is more luminous because recently there's been a lot of new foundation launches and everything's more of like a matte finish okay so i'm gonna put on photos of swatches and color charts and stuff like that on the page while i you guys some information about the new foundation so it comes in 50 shades which is amazing i love the fact that when brands are bringing out foundations they are dropping a huge line of shades i feel like that should be the normal now you know 2019 it's vegan gluten-free it's long wearing, a medium coverage, and a natural finish that looks glowy on the skin. It's 30 milliliters and it's $38. So if you guys look at the medium range here, there's a lot of neutral shades and there's a lot of cool shades, but there's literally only two warm shades. I don't know why that is because warm is quite like a popular color, especially in like the medium range. So I'm gonna go lightest, which is the shade 305N. So this color off the bat, it says 305N, if you look at the shade, it looks super yellow, and this looks like it will probably be my shade. I wouldn't call this a neutral. Just saying. First off, I do have to say I love the kind of glass component. I love the fact that you can even put the sleek logo at the front or you can whip it around and it says foundation in capital bold letters. At the bottom as well, it's really nice and bold, the colour, so you'll see it really clearly. And it also has a pump. We always love a pump. This is always appreciated. Oh, there she is. Okay, so we're gonna do the swatches here. Okay, so that's 305N, and then we're gonna go for 315N. Straight off the bat, this shade is definitely more neutral. This is definitely what I would class as a neutral shade. And then this is 315. So I can definitely see that this shade here is a lot more yellow. This one's a bit more neutrally. The next shade that I have is 320N. This one is definitely more pink. Oh my God, that's just so freaking pink. Jesus Christ, look at the difference between that. Okay, that's 320. So now we're gonna try 330W. This is the first warm undertone that we have. Oh my God, guys, how are we gonna swatch the last one? It's gonna like run on top of my lip. <laughs> okay, and then the last one that I have is 335W. So that's 335 here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom you guys closer so you can see. These three are neutral. I don't know if you can tell. This one looks super pink, like this should be classed as a cool undertone. This one's an actual neutral, and this one is more yellow. But all three of these are classed as neutral. 
Do you see why I'm a bit confused here, guys? Like, how are these all three neutrals when they don't have the same undertone? It's just so weird to me. This one is 330 and this one is 335. I feel like 335 is lighter than 330, which it should be the other way around. Like, this should be called 3330 and this one should be called 335. Also, they both say that they're warm undertone, but this one has more of like an orangey slightly undertone. And then this one is a little bit more olivey. So yeah, guys, it's just a bit confusing overall. I've definitely noticed that they've oxidized as well, which is a bit shocking for a luminous foundation. Normally you only find that matte foundations oxidized. Overall, I feel like my shade would definitely be this one here, which is 305 neutral. I'm very shocked that I'm a neutral, guys. This never happens. Okay, guys, so we're gonna go for the 305 neutral. I'm gonna apply some on the back of my hand. I'll try two pumps first. I'm gonna use my Juno sponge in lavender. I've only used it once and it's so stained already, it's so annoying. It actually gives really good coverage, wow. So I literally got this foundation yesterday and I'm filming the video the next day, guys. That's dedication for your ass, okay? It's got a really nice glow to the skin without it looking so glowy where it looks like you're oily. I feel like even when I had my oily skin before, I still could have worn this foundation and not be like, oh, so glowy, do you know what I mean? It's definitely not as glowy as my Luminous Silk, I find. It's a little bit more coverage than that and not as glowy, but I like the fact that it has a bit more coverage and it's not as glowy. Sometimes I find Luminous Silk, I have to like powder quick because sometimes it's like, you hella shiny girl. I actually read on Trend Mood that it says that you you don't have to set it, which I'm just a bit like, you know, like you have to set foundations, guys. No one can tell me that this is a neutral color. This is yellow. This is warm. This should definitely be a 305W. Okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like just with like one light layer. Nice, I like it. Mm. Okay, so for concealer, I actually do have the Anastasia Beverly Hills concealer, but I got given this when Anastasia first sent me my first ever PR package. Not gonna lie guys, it smells very rancid. I don't know if it's because it's really old. I only used it once as you guys can see, but from the smell of it, it literally smells like plastic. So I feel like it's probably super old now and because my skin is super sensitive, I ain't gonna be touching this, so it's gonna be going in the bin. But I do have the stick foundation in the shade Banana, which is like this. And it's like a yellowy kind of stick. Let me try this one. I remember when I used this last time, it was like, okay, it wasn't anything special, you know. I remember when this first came out, I was so excited to use it. I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna give me loads of coverage. Maybe we'll try again now that my skin's a bit more clearer now. Okay, I'm just tapping this just along under my eyes. I remember when I used this concealer before, it creased so much, which is why I only used it once. Also, the colors were a bit weird. This was in the shade number three, and it's got a lot of pink in there, and I prefer my concealers a lot more yellow. So I hope Anastasia comes out with like a new concealer as well because that would be amazing i feel like that big pot is a bit outdated now she needs to like come up with the new stuff you know getting allowed to do some mixing also having a pot concealer like ain't nobody with these kind of nails gonna be digging inside that pot you know okay so this is what the concealer looks like all blended out and i do have to say that i really love the finish of this because I'm gonna powder now anyways I can control how matte I want it whereas if you have a matte foundation already and you're still powdering on top then it's just like you're gonna have matte heavy cakey skin hopefully using the brand new powder that we have over here this is a translucent loose powder so I do wish that I got the yellow one but this is in the shade called translucent whoa this is a huge ass powder okay so I'm gonna put some imagery around the room here so you guys can see it comes in five shades it has a translucent a vanilla for fair to light skin tones we have banana for medium to deep skin tones and then a deep peach for medium to deep skin tones. There's also a shade called Golden Orange, which is for deep skin tones. So we're gonna be trying the translucent today and we're gonna see if it's actually translucent or is it one of those white powders that just gotta stay white like clown makeup, you know? So this is vegan, cruelty free and it is $36, which is like the same price of the foundation. Just saying. 
I do have to say that I wish it came with like a little spinner here that you can close it when you don't want it to come out because this is quite a big hole that it has up here. So I feel like, you know, when you leave it in your makeup bag or anything like that, it's gonna like shake around. And then as soon as you open the lid, it's gonna be like powder everywhere. So I do wish that they had like a sifter or some sort of like net maybe. There needs to be like a newer invention on how to do loose powder because this is gonna get crazy in the next couple of days, I'm sure. Okay, so I just looked in the mirror and look at these big ass creases around my eyes. Hello? And I, oh! Oh my God, did I just film this whole time with this big ass nose hair coming out of my nose? What the hell? No white cast, that's good. So it mattifies, but it doesn't look heavy, which is really, really nice. Whenever I see a brand bring out translucent powders, I always compare it to the Laura Mercier because I feel like that's just like the OG, you know. It's made my skin reaction look a lot smoother. That's like something that's really hard to cover as well, like skin texture, but I feel like it's kind of blurred softly, which is really good. Okay, so the powder is all on, and overall, I actually really like the powder. It doesn't feel heavy, doesn't feel cakey, and I put a bit extra on my nose because I've got a big like reaction there, and it's really blurred blurred everything out. You guys kind of see some of the reaction here, look. This is for my face mask for sure, I just don't know what face mask it was. So I'm gonna put on some bronzer next. Anastasia Beverly Hills brought out some bronzers, which was actually really pretty. This is in a shade called Rose Wood. So I really like these bronzers when they first come out. The only thing that I found with them whenever I use them is that you have to be so light handed. And sometimes like, I don't wanna watch what I'm doing all the time. I wanna be able to like do my makeup and like look around, watch a bit of YouTube and stuff. And I've done that once with this bronzer and I literally had like the worst bronzer helmet ever. It was just like, oh no, like I had to get loads of translucent powder and try to buff it out. So you have to be very light handed with this because they are really pigmented. For blusher wise, I'm gonna go in the blush kit in the shade called Radiant. And I'm gonna go in the shade here called Coastline. These blushes are exactly the same kind of formula. It has so much pigment in there. So you really have to watch how much blusher you put on. Okay, so time for highlighter. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with a product that was just sent to me from Anastasia Beverly Hills like a couple of days ago. It's called Vegas Loose Highlighter. Here we come, Vegas. I've actually never been to Vegas. <laughs> so I don't know what to expect from the highlighter or from the place. My skin is like so textured right now that I shouldn't even be putting on highlighter to be fair, but you can't resist some highlighter. Oh, it's a really nice shade. It's definitely very gold, almost like that kind of white gold. I don't know if you guys can see, the particles are very chunky. So if you don't use the right brush, sometimes it looks like it's just sitting on top of your skin and it doesn't look cute. Okay, so it's time to do my eyebrows. Anastasia Beverly Hills is the queen of eyebrows. I actually uh, don't really use her products for my eyebrows. <laughs> I kind of feel like her products are geared to people with nice brows already. Like all her brow products, I find they're a bit too waxy. They don't really like give me the pigment that I need for my bold ass eyebrows. So I'm gonna go in with the Dip Brow Pomade in the shade called Ebony. So I'm gonna do my eyebrows off camera because otherwise this video will take too long, but I have a whole video on my channel already on how I do my eyebrows and I show you with the Dip Brow. So go and check out that video, okay? I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm back, bitches. So I got my eyebrows on. I actually really like the Dip Brow Pomade. I haven't used it in a while, but it actually went on super, super clean. You guys see I've got some really nice strokes. I didn't have to use any concealer to clean around the brow because of the pomade. It's so precise. Okay, so we're moving on to eyes next. I'm going to go in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Primer on the eyes. This is quite recent as well. Okay, so I'm going to apply this all over the lid. My lid has a fucking allergic reaction to it so it's so freaking bumpy so i'm not gonna apply on anything shivery today because we don't want to accentuate <laughs> any bumps i actually really like this eyeshadow primer it's quite different from the p louise one because this one actually kind of sets on my eyes today i'm gonna use the Alyssa edwards it's a hot pink palette with loads of bright shades in here i'm gonna go for like a deep purpley kind of eye okay so i'm gonna go in the shade called unicorn tribe Okay, I'm just gonna put this right into my lid. Anastasia Beverly Hills was my first ever PR package and I will never ever forget that feeling. I remember I was in Egypt and then my young sister was still in the UK and she told me, oh my God, a big box just came for you and I told her to open it. And she was like, oh my God, there's so much makeup. And she was doing like a little video and sending it to me. And I just remember feeling like, oh my God, I can't wait to go back home and just see all the amazing products. I also feel like it was quite an amazing thing when she was doing her ABH PR list search. I remember the feeling of getting my first PR package. So I love the fact that they're opening it up for people to enter. And I love the fact that Norvina is like looking at all these smaller accounts. 
I don't think I've ever been reposted by Anastasia Beverly Hills ever. Maybe like once when I was really, really small. I definitely feel like they pay attention more to like the smaller Instagrammers. I think it's really nice that she like really looks out for like micro influencers. Okay, so I'm just picking up a bit of this Supreme shade here. I'm just using it just to blend up a little bit higher, just so that it has like a softer fade. I felt like the Unicorn Tribe, it was a little bit too dark to blend it all the way up into my eyebrow. So I needed a bit more of like a transition kind of shade. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a flat brush because we need to pack some shade on the eyelid. I'm gonna go in with this shade here called BBDC. So I'm gonna pack this all over the lid. Ooh, girl. I basically want like a black smoky eye, but with purples. The color is going on a little bit patchy. Okay, so I'm just gonna work this color into the crease a little bit more with a bit of that unicorn tribe, just so that it all blends in together. Okay, so I've been blending now for a good 10 minutes on this eye, and I love the way that it's so, so dark and intense, but I feel like this look would be extra cute if I'd done a little contact colored eye moment. So I'm gonna pop in some contacts. I'm gonna go in with the Otaku colored contact lenses. This is in the shade called Waterfall Blue. So I just wear contacts just for looks guys. I don't need it for vision or anything like that. So it's probably not the best for my eye, but you know, when you need the look to be like, mm, mm, you gotta come through with these different eye looks, you know? Okay, ideally I should have put on this contact before I done my freaking full face nearly. Oh, it popped in so easily. Mm. Okay, my contacts are in. They popped in so easily, just one go. That never ever happens, but maybe I'm getting better at this. Okay, so time to do the other eye. I'm gonna go and try to blend this a bit more because the other eye was a bit hard to blend out. So maybe if I start to do this motion first, that might be a bit easier. And then now I'm gonna pack that BBDC on the lid. Okay, so I just blended out both eyes and underneath my eyes I'm gonna go in the same shade again and then I'm just gonna put this just underneath my eyes right by the lash line. So it's super intense. And I said your bubbly heels has just brought out a liner. Look how pretty this packaging is. It's like a ring. It's not one of those calligraphy brush liners, it has more of like a felt tip. So we're gonna go and do a nice liner with this. This is the first time I'm using it, so I don't know if it's matte or if it's even long wearing, we're gonna put that to the test today. The applicator though is really nice and long, which is quite nice as well. Normally when you get eyeliners like this, the applicator's like short and stumpy. It's been a while since I used liquid liners like this. I've normally used liquid eyeliner pens. So it's quite nice that you can keep re-dipping to get more product. Oh my God, I fucked up. Bit of spit, always works wonders. Okay, do a liner again. The eyeliner is really nice and black. Okay, so I'm gonna apply it on the other eyeliner, lashes, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I got my lashes on. These are Sydney from Lily Lashes. Okay, so time for lips now. I'm gonna quickly line my lips. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with Stripped Liquid Lipstick from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I haven't worn this shade in so long. I really like Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Lipsticks. They're really nice and pigmented. They last for a really long time. And then I have her dewy setting spray as well. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, so that's it for this final look. I literally love the way that the eyes turned out. Like this palette created the perfect purple deep smoky eye. I love the new eyeliner, it's super, super black. I went outside to look at my makeup in different kind of lighting and honestly my eyes stood out so much and I'm so, so happy. I also looked at the foundation directly in sunlight and I honestly love the way that my skin looks, especially the fact that I have so much texture on my skin at the moment. It still looks quite smooth. Like I can only imagine when my skin kind of clears up. I also really love the powder as well. I feel like it's powdered enough where it's matte, but I don't feel like heavy or cakey or anything like that. Overall, I definitely would recommend the foundation. I love the eyeshadow palette as well. And I also fell in love again with the Dip Brow Pomade. I feel like this is the best my brows have looked in a long time. So super happy about that. Things that I would probably skip from Anastasia Beverly Hills is the concealer. I wasn't a big fan of that even when I tried it the first time around. I also didn't really like this that much. I found that when I was blending underneath my eyes, this 
kept creasing again even though I powdered it really well so I would probably skip this I actually didn't realize until this video that Anastasia Beverly Hills has a whole line to do a full face with there was quite a lot of items that I felt was missing I felt like the foundation and the powder just kind of like finished that little bit off I feel like she just needs to launch a really good concealer let me know if you guys will be picking up the new foundation I would really, really highly recommend it if you have more normal to drier skin and you like something that's not too heavy but you still want a little bit of coverage but you love the look of glowy skin I definitely feel like with this foundation you don't need to set it it definitely didn't crease all up in my smile line straight away so that is really really good for me to say that especially about a glowy foundation so props to you Anastasia Beverly Hills let me know if there's any other brands you guys want me to do a full face of I feel like it's so interesting seeing every single item from one makeup brand in one look so you can see how well it works together if there's any other videos or any other brands you guys want me to film with comment them down below and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys enjoy the bloopers Mwah. WW30 what the fuck is this WWF ah ah BIB while I browse on trend mood staring at the water is that from Moana? I just opened this and there was some old crusty contact that was all dried up in here. What the hell? Okay, so I just put some. I also know. Hello? Okay, are you outside? Yes, I'm outside. Okay, I'm not ready yet. If you just wait for me 10 minutes, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Do you want to win the bloopers? Roll the intro. I don't even know my intro song. So bad. <laughs>